Oh boy. I <laughs> I didn't check. What I <laughs> I'm horrible I... at starting these streams. <laughs> but I'm I'm back. It's me. It's Shocky Games here. Um Holy crap, it has been a while. You may notice that there are some some differences. Uh one, I don't have my camera. Two, I uh I uh I ain't got Hold on. I don't have my camera up. I do have a little icon to replace me because I don't want to see my face all the time in the corner of my eye. This is otherwise <laughs> Too distracting. I'm too distracting for myself. It's just, it's just my looks. And also, down below, if you do not know, that there is a... What's its face? There is, in fact, a Tiltify link down below. That is for the donations. For the campaign towards uh covid 19 um right now let me pull it up i have i i started this and i <laughs> i am horrible shush, shush, shush. uh shush. okay it is towards the united way cause um all the donations go towards United Way. And what they do is is that they help support um for stuff like COVID nineteen basically. Just to put it in layman's terms. I I, I read through their stuff and I forgot all the shit, all the important stuff. But in in layman's terms, they help provide relief and to me, that is amazing um, that they do that. So today's stream is for the COVID-19 spread and awareness. And today, as you can tell by the title, we're making some cars. Um, if automation wants to pull up, not on that screen. Do not. <laughs> don't. Not on that screen. So today, we will have a good time, and hopefully, we can make it to where I want to be. I want to make uh, $200 in donation money, just to start. I know I don't have the most subscribers, um, but I am... Um, Happy to say that I probably should have done. Why is automation? What are you doing? <laughs> Hold on. Wait. Uh. 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 <laughs> what is happening? What is going on? Oh no. Okay. Uh. Automation is doing some weird shit right now, and I need to figure out what. Oh! <laughs> oh boy. So this is my first charity live stream on this channel, and uh, I hope I hope things go well. I uh, right now automation's loading, so I can't really load it up right now. It's doing. Weird things. What are you doing? Stop. Please. I, I don't need this. Automation. <laughs> I'm begging you. Now is not the time. I'm going to turn down my headphone volume so that way I don't deafen myself when the game starts. So we will be making some cars today in the usual sandbox. Um, I don't know, it's been a while, if automation is going to work. Um, automation, um, sometimes 
decides not to work. I haven't played automation in like months. Um so so I've done nothing with this game. It's just been sitting there waiting for the day to be picked back up. It's being packed back up only to load forever. Damn you. <laughs> I am uh, not okay. Um uh I'm going. Let's, let's make a couple of changes here. All right, all right. So that's me. Yes. Okay. Let's get get you get yeah. All right. So I I put myself in another corner right now. Uh, cause I know where automation's layout is. Um, if it will load, please help. <laughs> please, I am begging you. I'm gonna close that automation real quick and let's try this again. Hopefully nothing weird happens. And so that way you guys aren't looking at like a blank at a blank screen. Hold on. So you guys ain't looking at a blank screen screen and you guys know that I'm actually here. Um So we are currently wake working on what is in the corner of my god damn monitor what the hell all right we had some weird shit here <laughs> we had some uh weird shit um anyways what 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 it's not it's not. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> I don't want a Steam update, damn it! <laughs> Just want to start the game. <laughs> oh, oh, love me, love me, love me, love me, love me. Hey, look, all my mods work. That's good. Okay. Get rid of this. This should work. So, so you know, well, I wasn't wasn't kidding when I said automation was loading and I can't do anything because OBS doesn't want to pick it up if it's not in full screen. Why? I don't know. I'll just let it do its thing and we'll be well upon our way. Ah, yes. I'm gonna do something about this music because I, I don't use the music all that much and on top of that when you're designing cars you're uh you're uh what's its face you start go getting a little loopy so as you guys know if you have watched my channel um like i believe you guys are <laughs> i hope <laughs> uh we are I have made, oh, so many cars. Starting with, what was my first one? I think this was my first, my first one, I think. I don't remember. One of these was my very first car in automation. So, anyways, that's besides the fact. Um... We're making a new car. This is how it's gonna be. Start off with a new car. I didn't set it to. Mm. <laughs> I didn't set it to full screen. I am full. All right, I got this. I got this. I got this. I can fix this. I can fix this. I'm gonna fix my chair first, but I can fix this once it loads. I can fi <laughs> fix this. Oh yeah. And to think I've been doing YouTube for what is this now? Five years? 
<laughs> Still haven't gotten the hang of it. Granted, I haven't been uploading as much as I want and, and or streaming. Because uh, life. I was considering doing a VR stream, but I was like, nah. Nah. Your boy, your boy just got, got done with some, uh, some of the surgeries. If I can get, oh God. I, I'm, I'm thinking about how long automation's taking a load. There it goes. All right, let's uh, fix this. <laughs> Okay, and now I can properly, properly, properly. There we are. There we are. Now it is proper. So we are going to make a new car. We're going to make a few cars today. I will be streaming as long as I physically can. Uh, considering my lighting conditions, well, lighting conditions aren't even a problem anymore. I don't even have my camera up. Don't ask why. Let's just say, uh things <laughs> so anyways we're gonna start off with a vehicle setup that i don't use very often i do not i words i do not very often use pickups look at all of these mods so today we'll be doing just that Let's just look around, look at the body types, uh, uncheck everything that does not have a pickup body type. Take me back. Pickup limo. Hey. Uh. But instead, what we're going to do, we're going to take some absurd that has no right existing, uh, like a pickup limo. And we're gonna make it ridiculous. <laughs> so starting off, we're gonna go right off the bat. Panels, carbon, car carbon fiber. This is a truck, so it needs to be strong. So it is a light truck monocoque. Um, and we are also going to go with what has light AHS steel and the engine now I always forget which is transverse and which is longitudinal I do believe longitudinal is long ways I gotta read this hold on shut your face longitudinal yes rear wheel drive I was correct. I terminologies. <laughs> now then, <clears throat> what are we gonna do for this? Front suspension. Of course, we're gonna go with the double wishbone. It is the most common, and as well as probably the best to use for this right now. Um, actually, no. I take that back. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna go with something with a little more off-roadiness to it. So I'm going to go with sol solid axle coil. And then for the rear as well, we're going to be looking at these. And clearly the coils as well have better off-road capacity. So that is exactly what I'm going to be doing. Having a great time. Um, yeah. So here we are. This is our setup. Now we're going to keep the quality at minimum for now. And we are just going to make a new engine. Of course, it makes sense to make a new engine. And, ah, yes, the new engine studio. It's beautiful. And we're going to see how big of an engine I could shove in there. Granted, the larger engines are the, v, are the V90 and the V60. So we're going to go with... We're going to start with a V8, V60... And go up to V10 and see how much space we have. It, actually, we have quite a bit of space. 
Okay. It fits. <laughs> so we have a V16 90 degree block in our pickup truck limo that we are building. And we're going to see how much horsepower we can shove in there. The block material, we need it to be the most the most light material we can get. Most light? Yes, English. I know what I'm saying. Uh, I'm just going to make it huge. I'm just going to make it freaking huge. Oh. Yeah, that's where problems start coming around. So, smaller stroke, it's going to be more reliable. Simple. Oh, it's at 205%. Oh. Oh. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. I'm going to put that up to 80, not, not 89, 98%. I am not dyslexic, I swear. I'm just, I'm just dumb. <laughs> I'm just dumb and slightly illiterate. So we have the dual overhead cams with five valves per each. Uh, why five valves? Well, you get more RPMs out of it, lower emissions, less friction. Why not? Whereas with a two valve or a four valve, you get more, you get less tooling costs and more emissions. I don't care about tooling costs because this is sandbox. Damn it, we're doing what we want. All right. Uh, head material. I I know it's aluminum something, but I can never figure out what SI is. Ah, I'm not good with uh periodic table um of course the crank will be billet steel lightweight titanium con rods and lightweight forged pistons uh we are going all out for the engine on this i'm gonna leave the quality the same I'm gonna leave all that we are gonna have variable valve train on all cams and we won't be needing a turbo. This thing by itself will produce plenty of torque without a turbo. Of course, the fuel system will be direct injection and the configuration will be per cylinder with a race intake. Uh, so I said, hey, let's make a crazy car. Now... My idea is to put it to where it uses regular fuel. Yeah, that's right. Regular fuel. We'll see what happens when, if, if it starts knocking or not. If it doesn't, we're increasing the fuel quality. All right. So racing exhausts. It'll be a dual exhaust setup because, wow, okay. <laughs> I never really looked at the exhaust on a V16, and now that I have, oh man, that's a lot of pipes. <laughs> we're going to get rid of this. We already know that everything works. Bypass valves, yes, please. Um, we're not going to mess with exhaust diameter. We're going to go with a highway, a highway, a high flow three-way catalytic converter. Uh, and the muffler. We need something with quite a bit of airflow so the first muffler is going to be a straight through it'll have the most amount of airflow going through it and it'll be the least restrictive and for the second muffler we are going to go with baffled um why baffled you say that's a easy question now seeing that uh <clears throat> our um what's its face our engine is being capped out at over 5,000 RPM, almost 6,000 RPM. We're going to increase the RPMs. Uh, let's say something about here. About 7,800. And there's a nice little fall off. It's not much. It's 618 horsepower, which is not very much considering the kind of power this thing puts out. But it does have a shit ton of torque, uh, which is exactly what I want. Uh, so the bottom end, we're not going to change anything about that, obviously. Compression. 
more power and more fuel efficiency, the higher the compression. I don't care about fuel efficiency, we're just going for power. So now we're going to have to increase the fuel. So we're going to go with premium fuel. There we go. Let's see how much higher we can make this now without it knocking. It's going to want more fuel. I'm going to make it a stronger fuel mixture and see where that tops out. So there we go. So now we're at 11.6 on the compression ratio. We're going to increase the fuel again and the timing as well. So this thing has, puts out almost 700 horsepower, but it weighs so much that it's not quite efficient. So the cam profile, we need to increase horsepower, damn it. More horsepower. So there you go. I'm going to increase the RPM limits once more. Go to the top end, and then we're going to increase compression. Oh, okay. I'm going to go back up here, see what we can do. Go back to the fuel system, and if I can't get it, the cam profile any higher without losing any horses, we're good. All right, cool. So there is our RPM limit right there. We've got a bit of valve float. We'll be fine. Take that out. Then we're going to increase the ignition timing. Let's see how high we can make this. Oh, God. Oh, God. Too far. So, 87 seems good. A fuel mixture is very rich. Any lower, it goes away. Any higher, we start losing power. Which makes sense. Now, I feel like our biggest problem is airflow. The exhaust, of course, is our biggest problem. So we're going to go over to our exhaust, take a look at that. Ah, yes, we have a two inch diameter exhaust. And then we're going to just bring this up until it goes up to B. We are losing power. Eight inch exhaust. So we're going to see. 1277 horsepower. Oh my god, peak torque is at 7500 RPM. Okay. So that's not bad. So we're going to take a look at that exhaust. Oh, that's a big boy exhaust. Um, so we're just going to take a look. All right. Beautiful sound. It's a beautiful sound. I am going to have to lower the volume on this game because this is really loud. <laughs> but in doing so, I could turn up my headphone volume, so I got that going for me. Alright. So there we go. Oh, wait. Go back. So I want to see just how much more power I can put in here by increasing the quality of the exhaust. The exhaust system is probably where our biggest chokehold is at. There's not much of a chokehold anywhere else. Okay. Fuel economy is... Our fuel efficiency is nowhere. Uh, so I have an octane of 93. So that means I could put it to... 95. Premium fuel. That's not bad. I mean, it's not like we lose anything from it. So. And then I can up this. And then. Look at that. Octane of 89. That's efficient right there. Oh, boy. So, I said I wasn't going to fuck around with the quality settings, and here I am, fucking around with the quality settings. Oh boy. We still want to be able to look at the stress limits. 
So that's where our biggest problem is. Our pistons and car rods are maxing out at 10,000 RPM. So we go to the bottom end and see where we can increase. Decreasing this, but increasing this will allow me to get a higher RPM and still be able to put out more power in the long run. Or I could just increase the quality and RPMs will go up and I can just put these back up to there. Now, there's not much of a red line there, so not much space for redlining the engine. So there we go. That is where our engine is at right now. RPM limit of 10,500 RPM. It's a pretty big, uh, pretty, pretty big. So once again, I can't change anything without losing too much performance, but I can decrease this, gain a little bit of extra. The ignition timing, I can increase the ignition timing, but I still lose after a certain point, which makes sense. Can I increase the compression ratio? I can. And at the bottom end, there's nothing else to change. That we're just gonna take a nice listen of this beautiful engine. Okay, yeah, that was loud. My poor ears. Holy shit. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but here we are so now we go grab the truck body here we are limo limousine all right so <laughs> we're just gonna there we go yeah how much longer can i make this yeah can I make, can I make this like, oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, this is what I live for, <laughs> big fender flares, and, and just massive, massive vehicle body, oh my god, bulges my dude, and oh no, weird polygons, what is with that shape, I would appreciate if you didn't do that. Thank you, fine sir. That is not okay. All right. So there we go. That's uh, some nice, some nice space to make it look like you know. Hey, you could probably fit a big ass engine in there. You know. Just saying, move that out a bit. There you go. I'm not going for for looks. I'm going just purely off of just just a cosmetics what is the point of this this does absolutely nothing for me uh oh yeah <laughs> oh no that was not what i wanted go back <laughs> no uh i think that's just about every oh my god yes <laughs> It's beautiful. You guys don't understand. This is oh oh <laughs> oh. It's hideous. Oh oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need to put some derpy looking headlights on this thing. I really do. Oh. <laughs> Please tell me. I have some derpy fucking headlights. I need. 
Oh, I absolutely need the derpiest of derp. Please. I'm not looking for sleek. I'm looking for straight ugh. Oh, I think I've got my decision. I think I have my decision. There, okay. Oh. <laughs> it's like that, uh. <laughs> what's that one fish with the eyes? <laughs> Yeah, that really narrows it down, dude. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, I am, I am ruining this car. I am 100% going to ruin this car. Oh, no, what are you doing? Alright, 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 alright. No! You fool! What are you doing? Ugh. I forgot how to turn off the grid snap. Wait, here it is. Here it is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> I th I think I think you guys know what I'm doing. <laughs> Ah, oh, yes. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. Look at it. Oh, man. Would you want to get a ride in this limo? Ah, oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> what a what a beautiful limo. Oh. Oh, we are now we have the grill. Let's get let's get some fantastic beautiful, you know. Oh. This one's already ready. It's got a smile and everything. Uh Yes. Of course with a engine this big, you're gonna need as much cooling as possible. And I do believe I have the answer for that. This this one right here. Wait. Ah. Yes. Hold on. Nah, I need to turn on. I need to turn on grid snap now. There it is. Snap to the center. Oh. Yes. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> it kind of reminds me of Monster Cat logo. I'm not going to lie. It, <laughs> it kind of reminds me of the Monster Cat logo. Ah, oh, yes. Hold on. We're just going to... There we go. <laughs> oh, it's so ugly. But I fucking love it. Oh. Oh, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. So, I'm going to real quickly take a look at this. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, uh, hold on, I'm checking something. Hey, why did I just close that? I need to be able to see things. Uh, I'm breaking things. Hold on. Hold on.
Hold on. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? I'm breaking things. Here. Aha. Got it. <laughs> Don't mind me. Just breaking things as usual. All right. Uh, chill. What's next? What more can I do? What? Wait, I've got to have fog lights. I've got to have fog lights. Why would I want those? Oh! Yes. <laughs> He's coming for you. He's coming for your memes. Oh, what is this light fixture? <laughs> We're keeping it. It's, it's glorious. Ah. Oh. oh, look at him. He's so happy. He's not going to be happy with what's coming up next, but he looks so happy. <laughs> oh, boy, oh boy. Now for the terror lights. Terror lights? Jesus Christ, I can't speak for the life of me. For tail lights, we're just going to put, we're just going to slap something on. It's just. Why not? Something that absolutely does not match the body style of this vehicle at all. Yeah, why not? Can't say no to some... Some nice lights. Yep. <laughs> so, now we have a grill. We're just gonna go absolutely all out on this car and make the most hideous thing that I could possibly think of. Uh, and if I'm gonna be completely honest, I haven't done a hideous car in automation like ever, and I'm kind of afraid of my <laughs> of the possibilities. I'm used to making cars that make sense. Not cars that want to die upon being made. So there we go. Let's just... Yeah, there we go. Wait. Just got to make that big as possible. Yeah, this will do. This will do. That'll do. And I'll big ol... Big ol' intake scoops. <laughs> Some, uh... That way. Gotta get that airflow to the brakes. You know. You know what I mean? Have a good time. I'll put a massive scoop on the front. Oh yeah, I'm going there. <laughs> what goes into the windshield? I think I've, uh... I think I've succeeded at doing something that I wholeheartedly regret. Oh! 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 <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> I can move it forward and pass the bumper! There we go. Now, I don't want to mess up the aerodynamics too bad. That, that'll do. It looks like it's got a shotgun for her face. <laughs> What's next? What else can I add to this, to this disgusting creation? Oh, man. I got an idea. Don't hate me for it, but I've I've got an idea. Yeah, we have that big scoop on the front. We've got to add two absolute chonkers <laughs> to the side. 
Wait, wait. Ah, no, it rotated on me. Yeah, there we go. Absolute chonkers to the side. Oh, they're ready for action. <laughs> Airflow. <laughs> Got plenty of it. <laughs> oh, this thing's gonna be so front heavy. <laughs> Let's, uh... I have a few sunroofs to this thing. Why not? Uh, hello? Oh, hello? Uh, okay. So the sunroofs are, uh, non existent. I see. So that's not an option. Sadly, I can't add sunroofs. But what I can do is hold on. I've got another idea. I have another idea. What? What? Oh. Come on. Sir? I'm going to have to ask you to get over here. Play along. Okay. Guess you don't want to. So I guess you'll just have to um, do it this way. <laughs> Why? This makes no sense. Uh, don't question it. <laughs> just, just don't question it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. There is a way to make this 100% transparent. Ah, oh, it doesn't put a hole all the way through. I'm sad. Screw it. Yeah, there we go. Nice, nice, beautiful trunk. Nice, hideous front. <laughs> That's a face only a mother could love. <laughs> Alright, so now we just gotta... Had a little, little bit of, little bit extra. Wait, what? I'm sorry. Wait. What is this? What is this? What are you? What? <laughs> What are you? <laughs> Wait. Hold on. What? <laughs> what is your purpose? <laughs> All right. I don't want to go any further back, so. Oh. Do it my way. It just absolutely chonk the hell out of this. You see, there's only one way to win at this. Oh no. Okay. Alright, alright. Ah, uh, wait. I can't make it. Oh, 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 that's even better. Yes. There's no getting in or out. I'm just saying, but that's supposed to be for the front of the car. I don't care. <laughs> I, I don't care. There we go. It's beautiful. Ta-da. No going in or out. <laughs> it's so, so glorious. This is a lip that does absolutely nothing, and yet, automation's like, yeah. Oh, shit. What did I do? All right. Let's, let's actually put a thing on the front. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Nice chonking wing on the front. Look at that lip. Mm. It's glorious. This is as wide as it could go, though. So, screw it. It's wonderful. It's glorious. What? Why would you not want this car? I mean, why would you not? It's got everything you need, like... Honestly. Now, of course, we are going to put a wang on it. We're going to put the biggest wing I have. We're going to put a lot of them. That's right. Now, I do not remember which one is the biggest. I think it's this one. Or this one. No, it's this one. Sir? Sir? Sir, I'm gonna have to ask you to, uh... You know. Do the thing where you put the wing and it's... no. Nope. Okay. How about you? <laughs> nope. Uh, oh, yes. Here it is. Here it is. This is the biggest wing I have. Absolute monster. Nope. Okay. <laughs> you can go somewhere. Mm -mm. I am disappointed in the availability of ugliness points that I could put on this car. Wait, what is this? Oh. My God. I cannot move it. <laughs> Can't. Wait, there it goes, there it goes. And make it as big as I can. <laughs> as big as this big boy will let me go. This thing is huge. Okay, I, can't, I, I physically cannot move this anymore. I, I literally cannot move this wing anymore. Oh, wait. There, there it goes. Big boy. He go where he go. A massive wing. There we go. Yeah. Where are we going? We're going to need a wing this big. <laughs> okay, maybe not that big. That's a little bit, a little overkill. Uh, yeah, maybe a little smaller. Maybe, 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 maybe a little, a little smaller. A little, a little smaller. No, a little, a little, just, just, a little, just a little bit. Just, okay. Can I move it back? Can I, can I move it at all? Hello. Oh, oh, I can move it further back. Hold on. We are figuring things out. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that's... Yeah! <laughs> yeah! All right, now we have it. <laughs> Tyrant signals. Do you really need to see those signals? Nah, you don't. Because you're not driving behind this thing. <laughs> No one is. If you're driving behind this, you've you've clearly made a mistake in your life somewhere, so, some way, somehow. Let's get some uh, some uh, sir. Okay, I think I figured out what the problem was. I was too far away. <laughs> I was zoomed out. Way too much. I'm gonna mirror this, put this on both sides. I know this is supposed to be, be a fuel cap, but I don't care! I'm gonna make them big as hell, too. That way you can't miss the nozzle. You've got two opportunities. <coughs> you miss, and, uh, handles. We don't need handles. You don't need handles. The people who are in this thing, they're not getting out. They don't want to be seen. <laughs> they don't. 
they don't want to be seen. We don't need no mirrors. Molding. The fuck is that for? Aerial stuff. Hmm. Yes. What is this? I'll take it. And make it. There. There it is. Boop. There we go. Take some things out in the air while we're at it. Oh, I could put a shit ton of those, actually. Yeah! That sounds like a great idea. Thank you, me, for thinking of such a horrible yet frightening idea. We're doing it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is a big boy. The tough boy. He's a strong boy. Look at him. Strong. <laughs> Nothing will ever be able to stop this thing. Hey. What? Sir? S Sir? Thank you. There we go. Now you get all the reps reception. This is a luxury ride. All right. Oh, God, I forgot about the... All right, we're going to have to make some room here. <laughs> I have found it. I don't know what the difference is. What are you? <laughs> I don't care. It's supposed to be for a bumper bar. Not much of a bumper bar. But. I do know. You will make some nice additions. That is not what I wanted. <laughs> we'll make some nice additions. What are you doing? Uh, of course, we gotta take that off. Go right along this way. We're just, it just sets it lower. Nah, we want these to stand out. 100%. They're massive. Absolutely massive. There we go. Yeah! Yeah! It's beautiful. I love it. Absolutely beautiful. Now imagine if I did make this front wheel drive. <clears throat> but it's not. So. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. There we go. Nice big sticker. Clearly stating our intentions. We are only going as fast as this thing can go because we need to poo <laughs> and that's it we're done there's not wait we need exhausts yes and this is where i truly shine with my disgusting taste what is this what is this oh yes <laughs> Oh, my good sir. You don't know what you've gotten yourself into. <laughs> you have no idea. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah. 
See the back half of this limo. There's no actual interior. It's only the front half that's an interior. Yeah. There we go. It's glorious. Wonderful, nice exhausts. And then... Somewhere back here. Or better yet. Oh. Oh. What is this? These are new. They don't do anything for me. You're disappointing. <clears throat> All right. We're going to make these huge. Absolutely massive. I'll flip them around. There we go. There we go. Actually, I think it'd be better off with the uh, double. Here we are. If I can move it. There it goes. Flip it around. Move it back. Nice in the center, and then as large as I could possibly make it without weird shit happening. Actually, yeah, that works fine. Yeah, that works fine. I'm gonna get rid of you. Goodbye. <laughs> you're, you're gone. You're gone. Yeah. There we go. We got our exhaust set up. Let's get some wheels on this thing. The most absolutely... What are some wheels that I have never ever used and will refuse to use for all of eternity? <laughs> ah, yes. The waffle wheels. <laughs> I've, I've got it. We've got to make them... We've got, we've got to make them waffle colored. A nice, oh no, what the hell? Ah, oh, yeah. They've got to be waffle colored. Do you like your waffles golden? Or nice and doughy? <laughs> I like my waffles golden. Ooh. You like your waffles browned? Uh, it looks like you're... <laughs> looks like you could waffle... Looks like they've been waffle stomping. Uh... <laughs> just... <laughs> if you don't know what that is... <laughs> if you don't know what that is... I, uh... Highly recommend... <laughs> That you don't find out. <laughs> there you have it. And we have the miscellaneous stuff, which I don't really care too much for, but seeing where this vehicle is going, I don't see why not. So now. Oh. 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 Oh, this thing. Oh, you are. Going to regret your own existence. <laughs> oh, wow, it fits perfectly in between. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I'm bringing this forward. And then we're just gonna... Whoop! There you go! A nice little addition. I don't know what the hell you are. What are you? Explain yourself! I... No. 
I know what you're for now. I figured you out. Do we? Do we really know? Do we really need that? Hey, what's this? Big wings? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. More, more wings. Oh, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, oh, no. What the hell are you doing? I don't see what the difference is. Oh, that one looks like it's actually a little bit more curved. Maybe? Yeah, it's curved. I want you to feel the pain of a million suns. This thing is going to be born as a disgusting freak. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why not? Let's get some, uh, some more additions. We're just gonna grab that, rotate it. That's, why not? Extra propulsion. It's <laughs> just. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that as far down as it can go? Nope. But that sure is. Lift you up a bit. There we go. And I'll put it on both sides. Oh yeah, it's ready. Oh yeah. Wait, wait, wait. It's covering up the sign. Shit. There we go. Now they know that we're business. Now they know that we are absolutely mean business. We are 100% looking for some of that delicious fucking toilet water for us to lay our you know what I don't want to finish any of this anymore <laughs> I stopped thinking <laughs> my brain was like shut the fuck up please <laughs> oh my, my, my brain was just like alright you need to stop talking <laughs> It just shut me down mid-sentence. <laughs> hey, let's get a roof rack on this thing. So, here we are. Oh, that's the wrong kind of roof rack. That's the right kind of roof rack. <laughs> Wait, what are you? Why is there a random ladder? The fuck? The hell? Damn it, Bobby. Well, <clears throat> we got a roof rack now. Ah, it's only a full scale. That's sad and disappointing. But hey, made a car. <laughs> Kind of. It's a limo. It's gonna have all-wheel drive. We don't need four, but well, I guess we could go back. No. Yeah, we're going all-wheel drive. Ha! <laughs> Which has the best? Uh, we're gonna go with a manual seven speed. Go with that top speed. Estimated top speed, 250. I would love to see this thing go almost 260 miles an hour. I would absolutely love it. Uh, 
Guess we could go with manual. Because I already know where I'm going with this. It's a truck. It's gonna be stupid. Uh, let's make it 4x4. Four four. I don't wanna do with power distribution. Quality? Fuck it. And yes. <laughs> oh, massive chonkers. Absolute units. All right, all right. We're going to drop that rim diameter. Absolute massive units. There we go. Some thick tires. Rim material. Fuck it. I mean, this thing is light as hell. It's fucking fast as fuck. Now the brakes. Production efficiency? I don't even know what the hell that means. Sir, I'm gonna have to ask you. <laughs> huh. We need brakes that aren't gonna fade just due to the to the absolute massive amounts of power this thing is gonna put out. So, I don't care if braking power is too high. Uh... Jesus Christ. Uh... Pad type... To why not? All the way. Alright. Off-road! It's gonna cover the whole fucking thing. <laughs> Active wing. So that way, we have the power. Cooling flaps. Sure. The brake's gonna need it. <laughs> Ah, uh, bullshit, eight seats my ass. <laughs> you can probably fit like 16 people in there. <laughs> uh, goddamn. Oh, I said it was a luxury. Yeah, we're doing handmade and luxury HUD. <laughs> Full power ahead. Launch control, we're gonna 100% when I take this thing into beam. Uh, which I will do that at the end of the day. Uh,. Safety, we're gonna need that. That's an absolute must. Now we will be taking these things off road. Semi active. Things are not working. <laughs> it is. This thing is dumb. It's so dumb. Beam can't... Not beam. Fucking automation can't even... Test it, like... Automation's just like, yeah, no, fuck this thing. <laughs> so we have no idea what the performance of this thing is. In any shape or form. Oh no! I need to know. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. So. We don't know how much this thing would cost to make, no nothing. Hell, it doesn't even have fuel economy. Fuck it. <laughs> Alright, so we're at a point to where we can get this thing up to there. I'm gonna drop this speed to where it goes to. About 150. Yeah. Okay, I was wrong. So, right about there, max horsepower has to be there. 
Got it. There it is. Beautiful. 1580. Now, as you can tell, some things are very, very, very broken. Uh... So we're just gonna export it. I don't. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, first car of the day. Well, something I regret making. Uh, run. For your life. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful. Run for your life. Yeah. Can we actually test this? Will the game just like break? Yeah, I can can't even test it all right well we're gonna export it to bmng and at the end of the street oh my god <laughs> what preview of it <laughs> oh this thing is bigger than i thought it was but hey it's got some ground clearance and look at those chonking tires We're gonna go over to, uh, hold on. Cause I know how much automation likes to have. Okay. Uh, well, there's no camber. Or sway or anything. Oh no. It just says Nan. Oh no. Well, I successfully broke. Automation. With the very first vehicle we made today. We're going to slightly increase those. Double this. Sway bars. Get some kind of sway bar in there. Jesus Christ. This is going to be rolling all over the place. We don't need no camber. Not where we're going. Okay, maybe we do. Okay, we can't get any camber in this. Got it. Got it. Got it. Alright, well, yeah, we're just going to export that. Run for your life is ready to go. It is, uh, probably the worst thing that I have ever made, and I'm kind of afraid. Uh, so at the end of the stream, for the grand finale, I am going to test everything. All of the vehicles that I make. Big oof. Big oof indeed. So anyways. Onwards to make a new car. We will be doing this. Literally. All. Day. Long. All day long. So, save it. And we will see what happens next. So, now we get to make a new car.
Why is it that people ask me of things when I'm in the middle of a stream? So, let's make an actual, like, car. Or truck, I mean. And let's see, let's go with someone that actually kind of looks like a truck. Not these. These are just... What? No. So I'm going to go with the nice boxy body. Which one of these? I have no idea. I'm going with the one with the largest wheelbase because that's how I like it. There's a 133 inch wheelbase. This one's got a wider wheelbase. Hold on. Hundred and thirty nine inch. Oh, my God. It's wonderful. I don't know which one to go use the hundred and forty six. Oh, my God. No, nope, mm -mm. not doing it. Not doing it. Nope, that's a bad idea. That is a bad idea. Hold on. Sorry, but am I the only one who thought that was a DeLorean for a quick second? <laughs> no? All right, then. Just me. Yeah, we're going to stick with this one. I like that one better. So, we're actually going to take this a little bit more seriously. And we're going to go with the safest materials. Partial aluminum. Yeah. The safest materials with the... All right, yeah, the safest materials. Now, this is, in fact, a truck. So, we're going to go with the truck. Monocoque, again. And we're going to go with the chassis material. AHS steel. We're not going light AHS because it's mostly used in, like, sports cars and stuff like that. It's also very expensive. And of course, we're going to have a longitudinal engine. Engine. Words. Engine. Solid axle coils all around. And there you have it. Nice. Beautiful. I could go multi link. But. Yeah, no. Now, I don't remember what this does for, yeah, shush, 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 shush. whatever. All right, so we're going to get a new engine. I have made lots of engines, as you can tell. Apparently, I've made 86 different engines. And, of course, we're going to go with a V8 engine. And it's going to be an aluminum block. It's affordable. If I do say so myself. I do need to make sure. Oh. An 8 liter V8. It's not bad at all. That is not bad at all. Now it is going to be dual overhead cams. And I do believe that. Ford does allow for val variable valve lift. I think. 
Yes, it does. Because we're going for the modern. So, forged steel. We're looking to output as much torque as possible with this thing. Uh, so, there you go. I got your quality. Got that set. Now, variable valve train. Obviously, I'm going to put that on all cams. Uh, now, for the... Now, whether I should make it naturally aspirated or turbocharged, all the Depends on what I want to do. I'm going to make it naturally aspirated. No. I'm going to put the twin turb skis. Yeah. Uh, make it about 900 horsepower. Yeah. Why not? I'm going to set that to be t more towards performance, not really anything else. Of course, it is going to be direct injection. Most 90% of cars are, in fact, oh, are, in fact, uh, direct injection. Most modern cars. And all you, you st you're starting to see twin configurations a lot more more often. We're gonna start off with regular fuel. Short cast. Dual exhausts. We don't need any valves. 3.7 inch high flow three way with straight through and baffled. So now we're getting some knocking. Which means you bring up the fuel mixture, go up, bring up the RPM limit. It makes <laughs> about as much horsepower as the V16. When we started really fucking around. Uh. So, yeah. But that This is with a turbo. Now, we are going to want to increase some things. They're already going past the point of where the fuel can't handle what we're putting in there what we're doing wow okay fuel mixture up until it can't fucking go nowhere because we're not looking for a fuel economy or fuel efficiency all right We're looking for power and torque. All right, 97 there, cam profile. Yeah, increase the cam profile. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. So we've got some knocking, so. There we go. Is we're gonna go to the ignition timing. It's going to increase the octane, sadly. So this is where things start getting tricky because now I have a turbo. The octane is going the the required octane is going to be much higher. So this is where we're gonna bring up the quality of the fuel system itself, and hopefully things will get better. Ignition timing going back up. 
increasing the horsepower and the torque and hopefully not absolutely destroying things. This is where we bring back the ignition timing. That way we could have a better compression ratio. Okay, it died at 666. I don't like that. <laughs> so I am trying to increase my torque. Okay, intercooler. That's, that's fine there. My fuel system. So I'm going to increase the quality of the turbo. It's going to increase the performance of it as well as this. And there we go. Look at that. Bam. RPM limit. It's all the way up there. But that's not bad. Up to 7,300 RPM with 800 horsepower. It's pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. If I do say so myself. But the exhaust itself, I do believe, does cause some problems. It's very restrictive. But I don't want it to be so free-flowing to where we're losing power or torque. An 8-inch exhaust seems to do the trick. So now for the compressor and intercooler and all that stuff. The intercooler is causing some problems. We're going to increase that. What are you talking about? Engine is knocking. So now we look at our octane. Our octane is... It's barely too high. I'm going to increase that. And we are going to do that. We can decrease ignition timing. Make it slightly towards the retarded side of things. And what I mean by that, the more brought back. Um, and then we're going to increase, again, the intercooler. It was just that one point. Now the compressor is also causing some problems. We're going to increase the size of the turbine. It's going to decrease the efficiency of the turbo itself. But we do need a lot of power. Now we are losing torque, actually. So we're going to decrease the size of the turbine itself, actually. And we can actually get some more torque. There is a sweet spot to where it doesn't stop dropping. There we go. So we've got a smallish compressor and a large turbine. Now we did lose quite a bit of RPMs, but the horsepower hasn't dropped all too much. We're going to change the AR ratio and see which direction gives us some more torque. We're going to lose horsepower dropping it then. And we can increase the boost. And now we've got knock. So we're going to drop the AR ratio again. Increase the boost. Increase the turbine. And I think... What I just did kind of broke things a bit. So where are we at? This is where we're at best right now. So. There we go. There's a lot of back and forward on this. What gives us the most power? 
and still looks like a standard power curve until you look at the boost where things start dropping. Yep. So we start losing a lot of power doing this. So now, look at that. Running too rich. So we're going to increase the compressor size. Actually, keep it small. And the turbine size can go up a bit. So we're looking at some pretty good horsepower, but right now our torque is now suffering. But what I can do is I can increase our compression ratio. And we'll get some of that power back. <clears throat> and increase timing ever so slightly to avoid knocking. Now we have piston, conrod, and crank failure. Which means we go over towards something that can handle a higher RPM. Now still not enough. Still not quite enough. Our pistons are suffering. We're going to need to go with lightweight forged. And then drop the stroke. And there you have it. <clears throat> I think this is the best we can do now. I think I messed around too much with this. Oh my god. Hey, how you doing? So, we're knocking because our compression ratio is too high. Raise that up just ever so slightly. There you go. Look at the flow. Turbine and the compressor, of course, are going to be choke points in the air system. Uh, I can up the ignition timing until it starts knocking. That's there. The fuel mixture is fine there. We could drop this back now. So basically, I think this is the best that we can do right now. If we had bypass valves, okay, sure, I guess. But it's really not too big of a difference, so I'm not too worried about them. So the testing. And the turbos are spooled. So you start losing uh, boost pressure about here. It's almost 7,000, 7,200 RPM, somewhere close to that. But there we go. Now we can go with pickup a crew crap pickup or an SUV of course I'm going with the s with the not the SUV with the crew if it doesn't crash come on automation you could do it there you go Now this is more of a standard sized vehicle. So there you have it. Let's do some 
work on the body. You don't need it that big because I plan on actually taking this thing off road. I don't know what the hell you do. What the hell? What the hell? Oh, you're just literally just like. Okay. So that's a new one. So, wait. Oh, yeah. Lower that. I didn't even know that was a freaking option. Hell yeah. Okay. Gotta make some changes. I'm just looking around, trying to see what I could change, what I can't change. Why would I... Why would anyone want that? <laughs> what? I guess. There you go. I think that should be everything. Just double check, make sure there's no weirdness hiding from me this game let's do that to me we're not worried about paint now let's just make it to where it looks like a functional truck and hopefully i can just go on with this so we're gonna make a truck uh a we already made a meme car uh make a truck and then we're going to make a sports car, because I am really good at making sports cars. So what we are going to do is... <clears throat> what do we need here? Something that matches the style of this truck, which is big. Bold, ready to take on whatever comes its way. You know? Now this is where I make my own headlights because there's nothing to make, but I'm not doing that just yet. That's more like something to mess around with later. Um, so you're trying to make a decision here. Because not all of these lights match what I'm going for. Uh, large headlights, very square. Round off on the side. So, what we're gonna do These actually interest me. Sir, can you? Thank you. So these ones actually interest me. So I'm going to make them a little bit larger. A little bit taller. I'm going to just figure out what color does what. Nine, one, eight. Okay. Five. Figure out what two is. Figure out what six is. There's a lot of things I gotta go through here. Aha!
Wow. Okay. That was not at all what I thought that was. Okay, yep, that's a no. Uh... I might have accidentally did a thing. Ah, yes, here we are. I gotta remember that. It's the very last one. Now take that out. Which one was it? This one. Yo. Lengthen. Sir, thank you. I appreciate it very much, you lovely, beautiful bastard. Oh! Alright, so the one all the way at the end, I'm gonna make that at least some kind of color. <laughs> this is our indicators right there. Ta-da! That actually doesn't look bad. Okay, maybe it kind of does. Okay, maybe it kind of does. And again, there's an on its own. Nothing there to help out. Clear up that empty space. So, of course, it just looks kind of off. Now we make a grill. I can combine these grills together to make one amazing looking grill. But I need a base shape. I'm gonna go with this one. Uh, probably one. That's not going to be, you know, absolutely horrific. Little baby face. Um, baby face grill. Oh, I need to put these all the way up front so that way this grill be overlapped by the headlights if it will do the thing. Sir, are you lost? There you go. It's been a little slow. It's been a little slow today. It's okay. Take your time. Take your time. No one's rushing you. All right, so that doesn't look too bad now. Now that all that empty space is gone. And then we can add something else to it. What are we gonna add? No idea, but since it's a truck, there's a lot of space to work with. Now, if I'm going to be completely honest, I need to do something. <laughs> Chris, there's no fog lights. Sadness. Which means I could end up having to make my own fog lights. I don't want to do that. Actually, hold on. Taking a look at all of these, all these beautiful lights. Oh, look at that. Conform nice and quickly. Beautiful bastard. All right.
So now we have the empty space at the bottom, which can be used for more grills or a vent. Um, of course, what I'm going to do. is I'm going to instead use a grill. Of course, on the smaller end of grills. Just near the bottom. Bring it out. And bring it down just slightly. Make it thinner. ever so slightly there you go so there you go now that's something that could exist it's not pretty it's not horribly ugly so it's something that could exist so of course we're just gonna grab a license plate jesus christ gonna grab a license plate stick it on there Call it a day. Yeah. Yeah. Making some progress. We're living life. So now we have a truck with a front. But now we need to do the rest of it. We're going to do the rear end next. So we're going to grab some taillights and take a look at what we have left. Um, don't mind that noise, that was, that was me and my mic having a nice little dance. Um, so what to do for lights? I don't want those. I don't want to use these, because these are the same one. These are practically the same as the front, I believe. They look the same. Um, ah, jeez, I just hit my mic. Um, and lights with variations. Hold on. Really feeling this one. But I would really like a light with a uh, indicator on the side. Just trying to figure things out. Don't mind me, just trying to figure Oh, here we are. Here we are. Yes, yes, yes. I'm about to throw my phone across the room. Just keeps going off. <laughs> Silence. Better yet, I could just turn this on. There I go. Muted. Bam. No problems here. Uh, yeah, no. I think with this one, I would need a uh, one of the bars. No. Oh, I don't know. The taillights are tricky because none of them actually look good. Which makes me sad. Especially on pickup trucks. Because it's got to have a taillight.
Why not? Gotta have tail lights. Like it's it's kind of required. <laughs> it's it's kind of required. But now I need some that acts as an indicator. Sorry, bitch, is this just a sticker? It just looks like a sticker. I know that there's some straight up just orange ones on here. Unless it's in the fixtures. Which, in that case, I'm a dumb dumb. Uh, ba 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 ba. So, in that case, I'll grab an indicator. And I'll make it my bitch. Just for today. God, you're horrible. You're ugly. Disgusting. Believe me. Oh, that might work. That might work. That might work. That might work. Oh, yeah, that... That actually kind of works. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Somehow that kind of works. Granted, it looks like school bus lights, but... It actually kind of works. Alright, I'll give, give myself props on that one. Give myself credit. <laughs> oh. I'll gladly take my give some credit to myself on that. All right, let's put a sunroof on the top so that way, you know, get a nice view of the sky when you're driving. There you go. There you go. Ta-da! We don't need this stuff. Get a gas cap. Preferably this one. Sir? Okay. Some door handles, mirrors, and then we'd have a functional truck. Well, a truck that looks functional. But not quite functional yet. Bam. Bam. There you have it. Grab some mirrors. Have to look around. Ugh, God, that would hurt. Ay. Ay. Yeet. Well, let's see. I will say, none of these mirrors match what I want to. Oh, I was wrong. Only one of them do. It's just this one. Just ever so slightly. Yeah. Okay. There you have it. Now we have a truck that looks like it can actually do something. Right. You need an exhaust. <laughs> you kind of need an exhaust. Uh... I'm sorry. 
sir. What exactly does this exhaust do for you? Screw it. We making it big. I think that should be everything we need. Of course, I can add a bumper to the back of that. So I think that's what I am going to do. So nothing with the with trim on it. Oh god, it's chrome. Why are you chrome? Why are you chrome? Better. Bring it across. Okay, maybe not like that. Make it thicker. Need something that stands out just a little more. There we go. There's the color back. And now we have a bumper for our truck. <clears throat> I don't like that little seam line, though. It's weird. It don't look right. It don't look right. It just don't look right. Like, why? Oh, wait. Okay. Guess that works. So now we can continue on to our... Yeah. We can continue on to our drivetrain. I, I, I know what we're missing. There we go. Now it's not quite so empty. <laughs> now it actually looks like a rear end of something. All right, so now this one is going to be, of course, four by four with a manual transmission with seven gears. This is a man. This is a manual truck in modern day. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. Modern production. Top speed of two hundred and three. Wow. I'm impressed. Spacing. A little bit on the higher end, increased torque. Yes. Granted to be that. So manual locker. Radial tires, chunky off road. I said wide. It's like possibly make them without being Oh. Yes. Alright, so now we gotta get the Tire diameter right. That's as big as we can make them. All right. There we go. Some 18 inch rims. And then the tire offset itself. And make sure. So that way they do that. They're going to be steel, of course. Ah! That's what I'm missing. The wheels. So something off-roady, shall we? Maybe something that could be used all off-roading. Decisions, decisions. Oh, what are these decisions? So, you usually see these a lot. So, go with those. And we're done with the wheels. Brakes. Disc brakes are used quite a lot. So solid discs. Front wheels, two piston. And solid disc, one piston in the rear. Ten inch. Ten inch. Yeah. Brake bias should be fine. Now, off-road skid tray, yes, please. We don't need cooling flaps. Standard. We 
interior and standard infotainment set now power steering is going to be electric it's going to have electronic stability control we don't really care about launch control uh the advanced 2000 safety because you know not 2000 it's 2020 safety going with active comfort semi-active dampers of course passive sway bars so drivability is in the oversteer section so this more towards off-road ride height is 25 inches that is a big boy two feet off the ground not bad but it's still drivable so now we're going to do something about this oversteer I can't do anything about camber. All right. I set that back to where it was. Uh, so this is where I go to the wheels and start playing around with the tires. And there we go. So now we're getting a bunch of wheel spin. In which this thing has lied to us. So max horsepower. Right around here. So we want to make sure that that reaches not quite what it is there. I need to decrease my wheel spin. My considerable about there you go it does reach 0 to 60 in 6 seconds understandable for such a big vehicle get 7 miles to the gallon oh my god uh aerodynamics i'm not too worried about um so we're going to look at our brakes our front grip in our brakes our brakes are really shitty so it can happen so i could set them to max size and it's still not going to do anything granted i set this to two piston our rear braking grip is fine what we need is our front braking grip to go up so that three piston four piston wow these are uh yeah holy shit I might have to do something about this. We're getting a lot of brake fade here. Oh, jeez, my voice. A lot of brake fade. Which is bad. Just in every situation. This is a high powered vehicle. Um, of course, brake fade being over a certain amount is uh, bad. So, what we're going to do is going to Go over to rim diameter, increase it. They're going to be 20s now. 20s. Tires are huge right now.
Okay. Rear brake force is high. That is what I wanted to avoid. Go. Problems with wheel spin, which is interesting. We're probably going to need launch control, considering how much power that this truck puts out. And there you go. Now our brake fade is practically nowhere right now. So, we're good at that. So we're probably going to get some launch control. Nah. The interior. So this is where increasing weight is a good thing. Increasing weight in this situation is a good thing. If you do not increase weight, I'm going to have some problems. Still got quite a bit of wheel spin there. This thing's for off-roading, though, so... Yeah. So there's nothing much I can really do. I can go with the electric. And that actually makes things a little bit better. So we could spare some wheel spin here. And there we have it. I want to see some. Yep. Okay. Alright. So. Minor issues. It's fine. Engine is running really rich. I know it is. But if I were to run it any less rich, get knocking problems. Which is bad. So, yeah. So there we have it. We have a truck that puts out a thousand horsepower. <laughs> Made specifically for off-roading. Now the question is, can it crawl? <gasps> oh god, I got hiccups. Why? Alright. So the question is, can it crawl? So. Not throwing score on this. On automation, makes no sense in terms of beam and G. It really doesn't. Now it's even worse. So I'm trying to see what I can do to increase this off roading score. <laughs> Sir, do you mind? I'm uh, I'm streaming here. Oh. Fucking dickhead. This is where we lower the sway bars.
So if you have an off-road vehicle, you want as much travel as possible. Even if that means sacrificing how drivable your vehicle is. There we go. Bam. I just cheated the score. Aren't I fucking amazing? Bam. Cheating the score. Aren't I just amazing? Bam. Cheating. <laughs> no, but, uh... I think with that... We call it a day on this truck. How much is this truck worth? Oh my god! Two million dollars! <laughs> yeah, no one's driving this thing! <laughs> Guess that's what happens when you make a 1,000 horsepower truck. Uh... Yeah. As big as the tires can go, sadly. So yeah! But it makes a ton of torque. Which, I'm kind of glad for. This thing weighs 7,000 pounds. How much torque does it put out? 1,000 pounds of torque. It's pretty damn good. I didn't name it. Get back over there. Get back over there. Oh, hey, that was weird. Uh, words and things. Words and things. So, what to name this truck? I don't know. Well, considering what the stream is for. Nah, I'm gonna name the other car. Nah. Fuck it. Corona Crusher. <laughs> Why not? We need... We need something. Something like this in our lives. It's nice, strong, durable, it's hardy, and it can handle a lot. So there we go. Alright, fixtures are... They look like they are set. Wow, I'm actually surprised the, actual, the engine actually fits. Most of the time you make an engine that big, uh, there tends to be a lot of clipping. Just saying. Now I gotta wait for this to finish. So I mean, is. Hold on. Let's get to it. Let's go back to looking at the truck. What I mean is, a lot of the time, you know, put an engine in a vehicle in automation, and it just doesn't quite fit how it's supposed to. So see that turbo right there? Right right here? Yeah. This just barely fits. Wait, no, no, there's clipping. Yep. Told you. It's ever so slightly to the side. What a shame. But looking at this though, kind of appreciate. 
like I've built a lot of cars in automation, right? Each car takes at least an hour to make. At least. There's no going around it. Yeah, these, these buttons are weird. Alright. So, yeah. In automation... Every car takes at least an hour, depending on what the hell you're doing. Uh, and then you think about, wow, this is an actual job that people do. It's kind of interesting when you think of it like that. What did I just do? Did not mean to click that. So anyways, we're going to make another car. One more car. And then we're going to spend some time in BeamNG testing these vehicles. So, now I want to make a sports car using a body style that I don't really often use. Um, SUVs, MPVs, vans can go. And I often don't make hatchbacks. Hold on, I was just thinking about that. I don't often make vehicles using hatchbacks. Why? I don't know. There we go. Gets all the mods in there. Uh, I think it just has something to do. With uh, the fact that most hatchbacks, when you think about them, they aren't really made for speed. <laughs> uh, they're not. They're not the most speedy designs. So, I do have a hatchback using, I believe it was either this design or this this one. It's one of these two. However, I'm gonna take one of these boys right up here. It's pretty much exactly the same. And we are going to make a car. This one would be a I don't know. Can't really tell. Anyways, it's gonna be a hatchback. Partial aluminum. No one uses space frame. Space frame isn't very safe. That's space frame. Semi space set frame is safer, but not the best. Monocoque is usually the safest option, but it weighs more. So, oh right, and ladder is just weird. Ladder just looks weird. And no one really uses semi space frame for anything, so we're gonna go with monocoque. Just cause. Now, for the chassis material itself, uh, it's going to be AHS steel. And actually, hold on.
we're going to use carbon fiber actually for this. Um, now the engine placement is going to be front transverse because we're going with a front wheel drive hot hatch uh, or hatchback. Um, they're speedy. They're they're useful. Good good stuff all around. Now we do need something that is compact. So for the front suspension, I'm going to go with a McPherson strut. Very different from the double wishbone setup, as you can tell here. Just taking a quick look, you can see the differences. Double wishbone. The actual suspension itself goes in here. At least the uh, hookups for them. McPherson strut, they don't really do that. The only thing that goes through there is the sway bars and the steering rod. That's it. Now for the rear suspension, we're going to need something that can handle a bit of off-roading capability, but still being sporty at the same time. Uh, but it also has to be very weight efficient. So, of our options, we have the double wishbone, torsion beam, uh, multi link, and not push rod. Because score on off road is not very good on push rod. So, we look at these, which of these has the highest off road capability, and we're going with multi link. We're going to make a new engine and we're going to limit the amount of horsepower it makes by using an inline four standard. I know. And it's going to be an aluminum block. Of wait for it. We're getting there. Two point five liters. Now it's dual overhead cam with four and we're gonna go with five. Five valves per head. Uh and of course the head material will be made of aluminum. Now I can't go with the more waste the more weight efficient materials actually no yeah that's what I'm going with the more weight efficient materials because this thing is going to race uh so build seals crank in lightweight titanium and lightweight tight and lightweight forged uh we're gonna crank the quality up on all the engine components right off from the get go uh, VVT on all cams. We're not going to put a turbo in it just yet. We're going to see what we can do. Injection is direct injection per cylinder with a race intake. Taking ultimate fuel type that we can drop down later. And the headers are race tubular. Uh... We're not going to use bypass valves because we're not even going to have a catalytic converter. Uh, the muffler. The first one is going to be none and then we're going to go with a straight through. Uh, now since we're already at the exhaust right now, we take a look at the exhaust. And increase the, di the, the diameter. Increase the RPM limit and see what happens there. Nothing. Good. Okay, we didn't even increase the quality of the exhaust. 
So, hold on. There we are. Yeah, that's where we want it. Now we want to look at the top end. Compression ratio. So now we're getting knocking because now our octane is exceeding our fuel type. So we're going to drop it down by enough points to where we have enough room to work with it. Pan profile, increase that, and it's going to reduce our octane. We're going to have to increase our RPM limit, aim for that, 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 enable for that to work, and then we can keep going up until things start going wrong. I'm going to continue looking at stress and flow. So right now, we're just continuing to work on our exhaust system and as well as our cam profile and compression. Okay, so now we've maxed that out. So now we're going to go back to the RPM limit and increase it again, see where that takes us. And go back to exhaust and look at the flow. We're good. I'm gonna go back to top end, make sure we still look at stress. And we're at 100% on cam profile. As you can tell, this thing is actually still maintaining a pretty decent horsepower. And it holds it up until it starts to fail. So, this thing can have a really high RPM limit, interesting enough. Um, but as soon as it starts to fail, that's when we're going to stop, which our RPM limit is now 10,900. Now, if I could increase the durability of the cranks, not the crank, of the conrods and the pistons, I would, but sadly, I can't. Not without dropping this stuff. That would mean sacrificing power. So, what we're going to do, since our octane, we have plenty of octane left, we can increase it. Actually, hold on. Fuel system. Ignition timing. Ignition timing also brings back where our top RPM is. There we go. And then I can run our a higher fuel mixture to increase how much power this thing puts in. Increase our ignition timing again. As you can see, things are still kind of going up. Okay. So our fuel mixture is fine there. 409, top end, and the compression ratio as high as we can get it. And there we go. That is, is the highest we can get. 400 horsepower on a tiny little car. All right, and then we can drop the RPM limit. 2,000 RPM more which is standard procedure for doing stuff like that. So, we look at the airflow now. And we can just push out just a little bit more power by increasing the diameter by a quarter of an inch. Uh, automation. It's a wonderful game for seeing how, how things relate to one, to another thing in a car. Uh, or at least as well with an engine. More, more so with an engine. Um, so, 
Yeah. It's obvious the guys who made this game are car guys, which is good. And I'm just glad that they're still working on it. Jesus Christ. So many good things. So, look at the testing. It's a nice sound. So it goes up to 10,000 RPM. That is quite, quite high. And it leaves for a nice sound. So we're not looking for a wagon, we're looking for hatchbacks. Which these two are. Now, it's either this body type or this body type. We're gonna go with this one. It's smaller. Let's wait. The body quality, we're going to bring that up. I'm not caring about price or nothing. I'm going to go back to model design and increase quality too. So anyways. Here we are. We're going to do some slight additions. Adjust the aerodynamics of this vehicle. So a less, so a more shallow angle on the, uh, what's its face? The windshield, as well as on the back. And how much shorter can we make that? Not that much shorter, but definitely shorter. We can bring that in or out. We're going to bring that in. And then we're just going to slightly bring that out. Yeah. For the actual like top of the hood, we can move it up or down. We're gonna try to move it down and bring it forward ever so slightly. Or we just make this whole thing smooth. Bring it back. Now we have a flat area, so we're you just put a grill in. We don't have to worry about no weird shapes. Um, we are going to have to increase the body width itself. So that increases weight. Larger door. Actually, a smaller door. Nah, larger door. No, it's somewhere in the middle. I don't care. The window size, I don't care. Just make it to where there's no weird shapes. And I think that's everything else we could do there. I'm not worried about paint. Now fixtures. We need lights. Of course, this is a not a very advanced body style. So we're gonna actually start off with the grill and we can determine what lights go along well with it. Uh, and so, and all our options are pretty weird. Let's go with that. Let's go with this one. And then we're going to just bring this up here. Increase the size until I think it should be good. So we're gonna turn off the highlighting for a second there. Yep. All right. I think that should be all. Okay. I'm gonna grab some headlights that I can just slap on there and call a day. Granted, I don't want anything wonky looking. So. I'm gonna go with. I used these ones on the truck, didn't I? These ones don't look so bad. So now, grab some lights. I'm gonna grab 
grab these. And of course, I'm going to set them to where they're up front. Got some weird geometry there. Uh, fix that. Change the angle. Okay. There should be a thing to where I can get rid of that. Actually, there's another grill I can add to that. Change how that looks. It's a very small grill. I think you guys have seen it. Boop. Do that for three. Make this two. I'm going to widen this. Bring it down. So that way it's not just some strange empty space. Go. It's not some weird empty space anymore. That's let's just be honest. I'm just trying to get rid of empty space. Uh, now then, for vents, we need something interesting. Hold on, there was a thing. I'm trying to remember where it was. It was an inter? No, miscellaneous, I believe. Yes. Here we are. So normally you cut out a part and it would be revealed, but we're not doing that. Well, actually, no, I can't do that. I know exactly what grill I can use for that. Uh, just got to find it. All right. I'm just going to flip it. There we go. Actually, shrink this down a bit. Actually, no. I'm going to flip it back over. Bring it out. Bring it up. All right. Okay, there we go. Wait a minute. There we go. Now it doesn't have that weird shine to it. All right, and now, miscellaneous. Go back up here. Ta-da! Granted, there is no turbos, but... Meh! It gives the look. <laughs> it, it gives the look. Well, we are going to ch slightly change the color here. Something not so shiny. But definitely, you can tell that it's there. Hold on. Oh, that one brings it out. Okay. So. Go. I'm going to turn the highlighting back on. There you have it. You got a car with an intercooler on it now. Cool. Alright. So, I'm going to scoop. Nothing too insane. Just something really small. That way. Airflow. It's increased. My good sir. There you go. Nothing big. All right. So let's get some tail lights on this bad boy, and we are going to go with 
these ones going to go here maybe not like that that looked weird that should work Yeah, that should work. Oh, do need a wing. Something that is going to be good for this body style. I do believe I have one or two. That I can, in fact, use. Nope. That's not going to work. Where is my, uh, the hell? No. What happened to it? I am sad. The wing that I used. Before. Is gone. This is a sad day. This is a very, very sad day. But it works. In the long run, it works. Actually, hold it. So if you notice, some of these don't actually conform to the body shape. Uh, that's because they, for some reason, the mods are slightly broken, but there's nothing I can do about that. Get a lip on there. That I can actually kind of think of something with. Oh, well, okay. Uh, sir. I'm gonna have to ask you to calm down. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Sadness. Uh, anyways, let's just stick with normal lips. It's my god, for some reason those things don't wanna cooperate. Go. Go. So I think I think I have that. I could put a diffuser on the back. 
if I can find it. Thank you, good sir. This is why I don't use this one this often. Because the body just doesn't like it. Yeah, you know, I changed the size of it and it was like, yeah, no. Thank you. But hey, it fits. It fits now. So there you go. We have a car. Kind of. Still need mirrors and a door, so. Yeah. Need something a little bit. I guess this is the closest one I could get. And now I'm gonna get door handles. Which should be easy because I just need one set of them. And there we go. Now we have a car. Nothing weird, nothing strange. That's just a plain car. Only difference is that the front actually has stuff on it, and the back doesn't really have too much. Which actually I can add a vent to the back, I believe. To, uh,. Of course you're fucking massive. Jesus Christ. Okay, my screen just... Uh... Went green on me. Uh... A well, game still works, but uh... Okay, I guess we're doing it this way. <laughs> OBS, help me, please. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I have to find my mouse. <laughs> I don't have mouse capture on OBS. I'm a... I'm a... Hold on. Oh no, this is not good. Okay, I think. Ah, yes, everything's back to normal. My God. I don't know what happened there. It's gonna be very honest. I do not understand what happened. That was weird. But I fixed it, so. A little bit of unplugging and plugging back in can't do. Alright, so we're done now. Uh, the drivetrain it is a front wheel drive transmission. I'm going with dual clutch, 7 speed. Top speed estimated is 189, so we're going to bring it to 195 because sometimes that thing is a little off. Spacing. And you need a lower gear spacing. I'm going to put it at 28 for now. And electronic. 
LSD. Bring up the quality. Radials. Semi slicks. Now, since it is front wheel drive, we are kind of limited. by the shape of our vehicle actually not the actual transmission which is a bummer so go with slightly smaller tires larger rims actually increase the tires actually to 26s got 19 inch rims 26s in carbon fiber. We're going to go back and change these wheels real quick. That way there's a little something something, you know? A little extra. There you go. Alright. And we're going to bring up the quality so that way we don't have to worry about it. We're going to bring up the quality right now on that. And we're going to go immediately go for 6 piston. 6 piston. Those are some tiny brakes. We're going to fix that. And there you go. Actually, you could bring it up to here. Here. And pads should be better that way. All right. So. This is going to be a downforce clad. This is not downforce clad. This is going to be a downforce under tray. Made specifically for downforce. Active arrow, there is going to be none. But under tray, downforce is going to be somewhere around here. It's going to be low. Because otherwise, we're going to overload the suspension. Uh, so quality, increase that, don't have to worry about anything else, for now. Seats! We don't need no rear seats, but we're going to keep them. Interior, we're going to keep it basic and no entertainment. You don't need it. Increase the quality so that way we reduce the weight. Electronic variable and electronic stability, stability, stability control and launch control. And yeah, there we go. And then safety. Of course, you have to have safety in there. Not too worried about that. This is more just stuff that you like. I don't know. Fuck it. Do it all. Then we're going to go with active sport. Semi-active. Yeah, semi-active. And there we have it. It's cornering is 1.28 Gs. That's a lot. That is a lot. Now, I'm going to decrease this ride height, which means I have to now increase the suspension stiffness. Now, I'm now getting a little bit more understeer. Increase the damping. Go. And sway bars. We want to limit the amount of sway. Camber is going to be useful in the event of high force cornering. So, we're going to lower up the front camber a bit. 
So that way. Our steering is not absolute shit. And the rear camber can just about stay the same. We have a sharper drop off on our steering into understeer, but the sweet spot is made all the way throughout. Um, which is good, which is very, very good. Um, now we are going to increase this quality. Number cheating. All right. So we're going to go look back at our drivetrain. And this is where we're at right now. Some of your top speed, 210. Yep, you were wrong. I knew it. There you go. Now there's a little bit of space. Actually, no. 209. That, that should be fine. And the spacing. Right now we have quite a bit of wheel spin. And there's not too much I could do about that with the front wheels being limited on tire width. Um, but with drivetrain, I can, in fact, decrease it, but that decreases my acceleration time as well. So, we have to make sacrifices to be able to make a fast car. It also means you have to make decisions on what is good and what is not. Right now, our wheel spin is at 3%. And the reason why we get are getting wheel spin, even though our car is really fast and has the best tires, is because of how light our car is. So now we're at 2.2% wheel spin. 4.7 second, 0 to 60, not bad. Now our brakes, I kind of saw that coming. So we're going to drop down the pad type. And now we're hitting brake fade. I'm bringing it up just a bit. There you have it. Granted, brakes are really strong. Don't care about that. I'm going to bring up our downforce a bit. And the front wing angle, if that's really going to change anything. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you need extremes in able for that to work. So there you go. Granted that all the weight is already in the front of the car, we don't need that much front downforce. Uh, so we're going to take a look at the detail stats, not those. Uh, design. 56% rear. I mean, 56% front. So like I said, we don't need to worry too much about front wing angle, but it is useful. Rear ring. Rear ring. Rear wing angle. We're making a trade-off between how much downforce throughout this thing has. We want to make sure that high-speed steering is about the same as low-speed steering. In yaw and all that stuff. Granted, yawing is going to be a lot more different the higher you're going, the faster you're going. So... That is where the biggest trade-off is. But if you go a little bit too low, you'll see what I mean. Hold on. If you get too low, you start with an upward trend, and then you have a sudden amount of understeer. Lots of oversteer, straight into understeer. So we don't want that. And there you have it. So a nice little trade-off. Uh-huh. So I can decrease these now that the trade-off is complete. And 
see how high I could get this before dropping below. 30 pounds. 197. Alright, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. So, here we are. We have a complete car. That is quick. It's got a decent amount of power. I'm going to look at this. I'm not actually going to watch through the whole thing because that's kind of boring, but... The overall stats... I'm going to lower the volume on that. The overall stats of the vehicle itself is good to look at. Being able to see... Alright, how much, how, how much can it handle? Seeing that it's 1.3 G's of turning radius throughout, it's pretty good. It actually gets better as you go faster. As a three degrees sway. It apparently reaches a top speed of 200 miles an hour. How that performs in beam, we will find out. Alright, so we don't have to look at this whole thing. It's going to take another minute or so. I was right. Uh, so, we're at 2 minutes 3 seconds, which isn't bad, actually. Um, most of my cars that I make that are ridiculously overpowered with really good handling usually get around a minute and 50 seconds. So, or a minute 45. Something like that. But this thing did pretty good at 2 minutes and 3 seconds. I'm impressed. And I wasn't going for anything thing with extreme amounts of power. I was trying to see how fast can I make a car. But as a hot hatch. With a inline 4. I don't really usually make inline four so it's it's interesting to see how how a fully tuned engine can outperform a a fully tuned inline four can outperform a you know a decent v8 so granted i didn't test the pickup truck because that would have just there's no point in testing that because it's going to be off-road and can't, there's no real off-road testing and automation so but yeah it's on capacity holy shit all right it's a whole ass ton but the detail stats of course it's all stuff i don't really care about but hey it gets almost 20 miles to the gallon it's pretty damn good and this is what we ended up with. It's a beauty. So now we... Ah, we have to name it and export it. I name my cars because I'm tired of seeing model and trim. Alright. So we're going to go... What model will you be? I don't know. Uh, I do have quite a few cars that are Opus. La 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 la. Uh, God. I haven't made a car in so long, and I haven't really played Beam and Geo that often, so I don't know what car, like, what my models are. Oh. At least what my makes are. Uh,. So we're gonna go. We're definitely gonna go with Opus. Cause that is my just go to. 
Opus what? I need something that's easy to remember. Hmm. What's speedy? What's something quick? Uh. No, that's too easy. Words, names, uh, anything. I need to think of something. Uh. The opus. This. What? What do I need to do? Something fast. Hmm. Hmm. This is where I fail at naming things a lot of the time. Uh, why not? The Opus Siege. It's not a bad name. Granted, it's a strange name for a hatchback, but... It is what it is. So, we're going to load up BeamNG after this car finishes exporting. And we will see just exactly where we go. Eh? Yeah. So, we're done with the three cars. And we're going to start off with our meme car. Of course. It was the first car we built. So we made the Run For Your Life, the Corona Crusher, and the Opus Siege. Yeah. Alright, so now I'm going to pull up BeamNG. Uh, and we'll see how these vehicles handle. Now, I don't edit any of my vehicles in MeeMinG at all. Because they tend to drive really well, most of the time. Ah, uh, like I don't adjust any of the files for them to change how they handle or anything. I wish I knew how to do that. But I don't. Okay, you, sir, are in the wrong monitor. <laughs> I've got to, <laughs> I got to fix that. All right, so. Ah, of course, I have to restart the game. Yeah, fucking, little bitch. Of course, Beam decides to freeze on me. Be a little shit. <laughs> Hold on. I have never, I've never had that happen before. Beam deciding to default into the wrong monitor. What are you doing with your life, buddy? Okay. Stratus again with less suck. Again, you are on the wrong monitor. Why? <sighs> you are a little cuck. All right, you little shit. There we go. Figured it out. 
Alright, so now... Of course, the most wonderful place to test these things out are on racetracks. But however, since I actually made a truck, we'd have to go around and... We'd have to hop around a bit. So, of course, we're going to start off on the automation test track. The test track that, as you know, is pretty all around, has everything. But, I want to, oh jeez, I have wires everywhere. All right. But, what was I saying? But, right, 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 right. For the truck, it doesn't have all that much to test with. So, to test the truck, we would be going to Utah and whatever map else I could think of it. Um, I can't think of at the moment. Uh, but for the limo and the opus that I just made, the siege, um, we're going to be going to. This one, the Automation Test Track, and Hirochi Raceway. They're two very different tracks. The Automation Test Track is a pretty good all-around testing track. The Hirochi Raceway is a very good... Uh, technical racer that's great for testing handling. Come on, big boy. Load. I'm waiting on you. Still waiting. Still waiting. Still waiting. Bye, you beautiful bastard. Just waiting. Just waiting. This is my favorite part about loading up BeamNG after not using it for a really long time. All the temporary files are, uh, gone. <laughs> so now it's gotta load the cache up again. God damn it. Uh, this is... This is... Favorite part. Alright, so here we are, just wait for it all to load in, uh, just wait on the skybox and my controls to respond. Alright, there it is, there it is, I mean it's going to be really low for a bit, there it goes. Alright, so we are currently playing 40 FPS. Which is understandable. So we're going to spawn up first the limo. And, you know, I already have my expectations. It's not going to go well. So, scroll on down. 
fun. Why is that? <laughs> oh, right. That I actually named it that. I forgot about that. So, gotta find... This is weird. I don't see it. This will lead to some problems. Well, this sucks. Seems as if they did not get... So... I'm over at Opus right now. Nope, it just goes R to T. I mean, let me look at something. Let me see something. Repository. Go to my mods. Order by date added. Which? For some reason. Oh, poopy. Oh, poopy. Poopy, poopy, poopy. Major poops. Which means we now have to go back into automation and re export our cars! Yay! Luckily, that's the easy part. It's making sure that they're there. Is, which is the problem. So... Sadness that I go through just for some good content, and of course, automation does not start in full screen. Why? I don't know. Tis sad. I cry every day. I just need this to work. Damn it! So once automation gets loaded, I'm gonna re-export to BeamNG. But I need to check the files, make sure that they're there. Shoo. That way you guys could see. And so it's not like I'm trolling you guys. As you can see, automation is taking forever to load. As always. Slow load times. With the sadness. Ah. <sighs> Okay, so I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna click on the Opus Siege, export GAR. It's gonna take us straight to the export screen. And we're gonna see
That is strange. Huh. 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 So I'll go on to Steam real quick and see which. Folder. So of course, Steam library folders. And. This is where the weird stuff happens. All right, this is where I go way off on, on the rails. This is really weird. Cause they're there. Which means I now have to find. Where Beam and G is at. So I have quite a few folders. What was that? Where was it? Okay, because I changed where my mod folder was. Which makes a bit more sense. So, I changed my default. Uh, mod folder. So there we go. So all my cars are there. <laughs> Back when my Steam name was my channel name. Oh, wonderful. All right, and with that, I think that should have all of my mods in there. Simple enough. Come on, Beam. Where you at? You're a good boy. You're a good boy. So there we go. Silence. We're just looking to see if they're there. Should stop, you know, freezing on load. There it is. I forgot I changed my mod uh, folder location. So, that was the problem. Had to find out where I put my mods folder. And of course, I put it in my big boy drive. The large drive. One who does all the things. Yo, but uh. Hopefully, all this will load up pretty well. Hopefully. Come on, BeamNG. Do your thing. Live your life. Load that stuff up. You got this. I literally loaded you like five minutes ago. Come on, buddy. This is what I have to deal with. <laughs> this is what I have to deal with. Oh, boy. Ha! <sighs> 
<laughs> Come on. Come on. I got you. I see you loading stuff. Work with me. Beaming G loads. It just like <laughs> just stops everything. Like, hold on, I need to think. <laughs> yeah, I need to think too. And I need to think that you need to hurry up. <laughs> No, this is taking forever and ever. But that's all right. I love Beaming G. It's been so long. I think I might go back to doing some Beaming G videos. It's the pure, they're pretty easy to do. Just cut out the load times. Anything that I mess up on. Because, you know, I'm an idiot. And just live life. <laughs> it's pretty much how that goes. Beaming G videos are so easy. They're so easy. I miss doing them. Okie doke. So we're back. With automation test circuit and now we are going to grab those vehicles like I said it was so to there it is there it is the ugly bastard there it is ah uh. Sir? I'm gonna have to ask you, what? This is where things start to get weird. Ah, yes, I see. <laughs> I've never had this happen. This is so weird. I think I know what the problem is. I th we're, we're gonna go see this. Hold on, we're gonna see if this loads. It looks like it's loading. But it's taking a while. Which means some of the objects that are needed not there but it's loading it's like that's not textured which means some of this stuff I might have to re uh, export the uh, the limo sadly but ooh, yes oh 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 wow oh wow okay I'm gonna drop this volume real quick I think that should do it. So we're gonna try this again. With less suck and more paying attention. So right now it's still using the normal gearbox, so. I had to set it to sport mode real quick. I'm gonna have to turn off the ESC. Gonna have to turn off the ESC for this. There we go. There we go. 
Now, usually whenever I do this, I usually have uh, a steering wheel on. But I don't have a steering wheel anymore, which is sad. So I can't really actually see if it handles how it should. But so far, it seems to handle really well. Wow, that was... That was a hard landing. Oof. This thing is... This thing handles so well that it wants to tip. <laughs> There's like no weight to this thing and it just wants to tip over. I'm driving this thing pretty well for someone who hasn't driven in BeamNG for a while. Because BeamNG handles completely different from every other game. Oh jeez, I'm off the track. Don't count that. <laughs> Ooh, hey. I was going to overshoot that hella hard. But hey, that didn't go too bad. That did not go too bad at all. Wow, this thing sounded like a beast. <laughs> this thing sounded absolutely amazing to drive. I will admit that was really fun. I liked it. It was slidey too. Now, since now that I know that uh, the meme vehicle doesn't work, sadly, um, I have no choice but to test the Corona Crusher. And uh, <laughs> so so stupid. And uh, I don't think it's gonna be very fast. <laughs> Granted, it produces a. Th thousand horsepower Jesus Christ the squat on that thing Think fucking squats, but it handles not too bad, even with the controller. Like, it's not that bad. This is really slow. Granted, it accelerates really fast, and I like it. And somehow it manages to keep the front wheels on the ground, which means there's a lot of travel in the front. This thing is putting out 13 PSI of boost. Oh! Okay, we just got ate by the wall. <laughs> oh my god! This got absolutely destroyed by the wall. Oh my god. <laughs> it was going so well. I mean, 
That wasn't even like the really bad part. I just misjudged my speed. Wow. That whole front that front axle got ripped. <laughs> All right, let's run it again, see if I can get a full lap in. Oh, man. This thing really loves go oh, just barely tap the tire wall and we're back on the track I mean, this thing is made for off-roading anyway so I don't see what the problem is with going off track is unless I'm absolutely like cutting corners or something then I guess I can see what the problem is there that's a solid wall we don't want to hit that. But I just barely tapped that tire wall, man. It really saved my life, though. I am going to have to slow down a lot. Through here. There we go. Using that four-wheel drive power. Was really trying to make sh sure that I could make that turn. That was lots of understeer. Got some brake freight at the front. And that power oversteer is beautiful to look at. Exiting corners with that. Ah. Drifted through that. There we go. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. This thing isn't doing too bad for something with tires that aren't necessarily made for, like, high amounts of grip. And then again, this thing is, like, 7,000 pounds. <laughs> is a three-ton truck of absolute insanity. That's impressive. This thing is impressive to drive. I'm I'm happy with it. I don't make trucks very often in automation, but now I kind of wish I did. I did a lot more. So, we're going to take these two to another track, and then we're going to take uh, the Corona Crusher to another place. Actually, a great place for the Corona Crusher would be the Enduro Drone, which I will do last. So, where can we go next to test the ah Pikes Peak gravel is the perfect place hear me out to test a vehicle like a hot hatch on an off-road scenario I could take it to the actual uh, paved Pikes Peak map. Um, could have done that. But I'll save that for after I do this run. And this loaded a lot quicker than the automation map. So, I'm going to go grab the Opus. If I can find it.
grab the Opus Siege. We're going to turn off ESC because ESC for high powered cars straight out of automation sucks. So. I need to change that into. This thing is not made at all for this. But it seems to be handling Pike's Peak pretty well. It does have all of that power on the front wheels, keeping it nice and steady. Now, the truth of the matter is, I honestly cannot full throttle this thing with an automatic transmission. Otherwise, this just refuses to shift. that pretty well. There we go. Use that slide to our advantage. I'm gonna have to slow down around here. There is, in fact, that really hard... Ah! That's what I wanted to avoid. Going into the ditch and or hitting the sewage drain. Uh... Start braking now. Use the handbrake, get some sideways action going. Really get it going. I'm gonna take these turns nice and easy! <sighs> Looks like that run is over. So we're gonna take this back to where we're back on track. Now, I am now taking control of the transmission. Oh! 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 Oh, no! Ah! And we're done. There goes the wing. <laughs> Let's bring it back up here. Back onto the road without, you know, dropping it like that. That was weird. Cut that real close. There 
Monaco. Beautiful display of control. I am using the front wheel drive as a way to control uh, my sliding. damage that cause just enough to where it's up there's a pool so let me set the car see how well it goes from here on out most of these mistakes are my own mistakes not realizing that I'm going too far in or out of a turn drive straight so we're taking it straight into the tree like a goddamn fool I'm gonna back it up Let out of that, uh, that turned a little bit too early. Straightened up my wheels too early, and I kind of went a little wide there. Oh, jeez. Almost lost it for a second there. That was close. This car's handling not too bad. Granted, it's not made for off-road driving. But it's definitely handling these dirt roads really well. This section's really hard because of, well, well, mostly because of the hairpins. You have to remember where you are most of the time. And I'm trying to use the map 
but the map sometimes just stops working. <laughs> but anyways, we're getting really close to the top of Pike's Peak right now. We're close to the summit. another couple minutes of uh just pure racing up this mountain Ooh, that was close Oh, that that turn gets me every time. It's probably the most dangerous turn in this entire course. Cuz it's so deceptively wide. Like you're just never ready for it. Oh, there we go. All right, slow it down a bit, slow it down a bit. Don't want to end up in the ditch. Turn. Ah. There we go. Don't fall off the edge. Close, get it close, get it sketchy. Okay. Oof. A nice save and recover. That was shitty turn. All right. And I fly off Pike's Peak like that. Especially on such an easy turn. I'm, uh, disappointed in myself. That's deceptively shallow. And off I go, down the mountain. Ah. And I bring ourselves back up. This is dirt. those front wheels there we go beautiful bastard I love ya right, there is a hairpin here there we go
and we have reached the summit of Pike's Peak. That's right. We made it. Granted, it wasn't in one go, mostly because I took this vehicle out of its element. However, with the paved Pike's Peak, that should not be a problem. So, once I find it, we can get started on that. Where is it? I passed it. Come on. Pike's Peak, where is it? Here it is. So of course, we're starting at the starting line. And once we take this thing onto the actual road, it can shine. I wanted to see what it could do off-road, and it handles pretty well. Uh, the only problem is, is that acceleration does not work out. Um, it spins its tires way too much, and it's just overall a bad time. So, now that we're back on Pike's Peak, but this time with paved roads, we can truly bring the full potential of this car out. As if I don't throw it off the edge of a cliff. It is going to be a much faster lap time since it's going to be in its element, tarmac. And, uh... Overall, I hope nothing bad happens. Alright, so I'm going to turn off ESC, put this back into manual, and give it a go. Yeah, it's much more responsive now. Stop, 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 stop. I think it just might be a little bit too responsive. Wow. I have never crashed after this turn. I've crashed doing the turn. Take it a little bit easy while I get used to the handling of this thing. Now the windy roads of this thing really is a good way to really see just how much this thing handles. Oof. We actually slowed down a lot there, but even then it was enough. I didn't catch it soon enough. I didn't remember where it was. Alright, this next turn here. Body work. There is a hairprint up here. No, <sighs> bring it back up. So much better driving on dirt. It's weird. I have a little bit more forgiveness on dirt than tarmac. I 
I do have to be very careful with my speed. Because even though this thing handles really well, it's extremely responsive. And I don't have very fine control without a steering wheel. Trying to drive this thing with a joystick is not the easiest. That deferential's really putting in some work, though. I just ran something over. Oh, 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 and we're upside down. <laughs> Pike's Peak, man. It is a dangerous course. Now, I am going uphill, and I do not have all the traction I want. But, my steering is fine. It's just, when I steer is the problem and how much. <laughs> my understanding of the course is all right. Careful, careful, careful. It's good to know that I'm not crashing in the same places, but I am crashing more frequently, so... I probably could have used the power of my front wheels to power through that turn, but I didn't. That's my fault. Naturally aspirated beast. So I will say that. I will say it, it's it's a very different drive. I'm gonna take this out of manual control. And let the sport transmission do its thing. So that we can actually focus on driving and not shift points and not all of that. My god! Whoop, 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 whoop. Got a little sketchy there. I kind of lost it a bit, I'm not gonna lie. Overcompensating. It happens. almost hit that. That would have been... That would have ended me. <laughs> that would have killed my car if I hit that. Oh, man. I have never noticed that there until this day. I've driven this course a lot in BeamNG, and I've never seen that.
go. Yeah, you good boy. There you go. My driving technique whenever I'm using a controller is not the best. Oh, I forgot that was a... Ah. And down we go. Ah. I was going pretty fast. I didn't... Even... I thought that was a normal turn, and then I saw it caught off in the darkness and I was like oh no bad things bad things are happening so I have to remember my breakpoints my apexes all of that I have to try and apply them. With a controller. And it's not easy. I miss my steering wheel. That little bastard decided to shit out on me. Ah. Ah. You shit. Hate ya. <laughs> I'm not really upset. It was like... Maybe a hundred dollar wheel. You know, it did last me a good year or so. A good couple of years of heavy use. Like, I was using it like every day. But the downside is, the, the sad part is, is like, I moved. And it just stopped working once I moved. Like, I had it set up and everything. And like... You guys could tell, like, I was using it for a little bit, but buttons weren't working properly anymore. And, yeah. Like, I couldn't use the paddle shifters anymore. Like, just, they just stopped working. Like, they went from being able to, like, work every once in a while. To, like, not working at all. Not like that was much of a problem for me, because I had a... A, uh... I have an actual uh, stick shifter with an H pattern and a sequential mode. Uh, ah, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that wheel was fucked. You can see this, uh, they're both kind of not pointing straight anymore. So. Bring it back. Yeah, I just took that just a little too hard. Like I was saying, uh, my steering wheel just stopped working. Like, I had maybe, like, like I guess, like, I could have continued using it, but, like, it wouldn't have been the same without the paddle shifters. Or even the function, the button functionality. Because that was my controller for a while. Oh! No! No! <laughs> oh, we had liftoff! Oh! I'm looking at the replay from the stream, and it's just... That is so bad. I've never had that happen with any car. I took that way too fast. Ah, that steering linkage is broken. Ah. 
this part of the track always gives me the worst time. Always the worst time. Okay, so there's a hairpin coming up. Uh, Jesus Christ. We're close to the summit, so... With that... this and with this I can say that this car does handle it's just really responsive beyond responsive to where the point I can control it with a controller on tarmac but on dirt it's fun <laughs> so now we're gonna take we're gonna head over to Utah or no the Enduro drone to see if the Corona Crusher can in fact make it if a car can if any vehicle can make it through the Enduro drone in three laps without being absolutely destroyed they could take on the Corona. And that's what I'm hoping the Corona Crusher can do. Because it has a soft suspension, it's all-wheel drive. I mean... Like... It's got all the suspension travel in the world. So I'm hoping that it can handle some of these jumps. The dips. The turns. All of it. Granted, it is an automation vehicle, so it is kind of cheating. But automation vehicles are not known to have the best suspensions, so... Especially when it comes to soft suspensions, just straight out of them. So there we go. Over the bumps, nice and easy. And now we're on to the dirt, where this thing is supposedly supposed to be the best out of, of its abilities at. And I'm not disappointed by this thing at all. Like, it is really hanging in there. Holy crap. Minimal damage. Let's see how well it can handle the mud pits. And it's just plowing straight through the mud pits. Not even slowing down. I am highly impressed. Most automation vehicles, their suspensions would have broke by now. Okay. Now we're dog walking it. <laughs> oh, no. It was completely thrown out of alignment by that jump. Ah. Oh. The Corona Crusher does not look like it can handle the Endurodrome. But that was just me driving. So, I'll give it another go. As we all know, my driving sucks. On controller and with a racing wheel. Ew. 
Yeah, this got toe out. <laughs> that's that's towed out. Those dampers are practically non-existent, but this thing is I made this thing for with crawling in mind. Uh you know. You know, you gotta keep the wheels on whatever surface you're on as much as possible. And it looks like... When we go back to this thing's element, which is driving like a madman through dirt roads. And power straight through that. There we go. It's power. All that power. Let's take it a little bit easier. Not quite as, you know, destructive. Oh, okay, yeah. A little more cautious through here. I need to be careful with that jump. Because that's where my suspension broke last time. And it seems to be doing all right. It's not bad. Oh, and we flipped. Ah, no. I mean, this thing was doing pretty good. We're gonna go another try. I don't know what happened there. I think I just hit the brakes and I hit a bump all and this is just steering and all at the same time I just ended up flipping it. In the end, it just couldn't handle it. This is the Enduro Drone, and it is made to test a vehicle's endurance, no matter how bad the driver is. Oof. Power, there we go. Get the mud. As you can see, that suspension's really working. That suspension, man. It's beautiful. Oh. And we're good. We're in the clear. Take it nice and easy through here. Don't want to hit our roofs. Hey, hello. I can it handle it. Oh. This thing's looking to do a front flip or back flip. Oh! Absolutely destroying the tailgate. But! Are those wheels still aligned? No way! It's only got a minor fucking pull! I'm impressed! Okay, uh. Oh no. Okay, never mind. That was just the. Now the frame is bent, 
completely out of place thanks to the impacts. But it still drives. But considering it's an automation vehicle, it's slightly cheating. Cheating. But the Corona Crusher is made to survive, damn it! Oh, okay. Not like that. I mean, technically, it still runs. You know what? Roll, damn it. There you go. We still gotta go through this at least part way, even if we did miss it. It still runs, we're good. Yeet! Yeet! Ah! Okay, that was all me. I'll admit that. That was all me. I, uh... I killed it. <laughs> I killed it. But it made it through a lap, even though... I absolutely destroyed it. Because of my inability to control myself. Now this one you want speed! Ooh, that pothole. Jesus Christ. I like the fact that every pothole has depth. And they're not the same. Ah! Look at that. Like, none of the potholes are the same, and I appreciate that. That's, that's, that's level design. San helping me get back on the track. Telling me to get my ass back in there. Say, we have to destroy this. We have to... We, we've got to conquer this. Ah! Oh, ah! Oh, no! I got overconfident. <laughs> Where did my wheel go? Oh, there he is! Hey, buddy! How you doing? Uh, 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 ah. Uh. I thought he was going to keep going. Wait, no, he's still going. Look at that guy. Go! Ah, he's a trooper. So it seems, at my pace, I cannot, in fact, crush the Corona with the Corona Crusher. But, if I think about it logically, this one's a little bit slower. If I think about it logically, I can, in fact, do this. If I approach every obstacle differently. Instead of just gassing it all the way through. Like I always have been. Now we're back on the dirt. Now, we do have a slight pull to the left from our, from the first big jump, which I believe was my fault. So, like I said, you gotta handle every obstacle differently. You need to take some speed to this one. Suspension on that side is completely busted. I've slammed the fuck out of the right, out of the left side suspension. The left side suspension is barely hanging me on there. However, it still does have that extension travel. However, my cornering is now f absolutely fucked. On the wheels? Ah, not like that. Oh, 
However, you can't keep the Chrono Crusher down forever. He will continue to drive for all eternity. Wow, this thing is surprisingly still going at this pace. Wow. I'm very much dog walking this. Seems as if the, uh... Ah! Okay. This is a coink a dink Yeah, this thing is done. It's done. So, with that, I believe that, uh, the Corona Crusher might not have gotten a fair challenge. Uh, <laughs> taking on the Endurodrome, which, which... Which, in fact, it was not made for the Endurodrome, but it was made for crawling. Um, at least with crawling in mind. And Utah, USA is the perfect place to test crawling. There's quite a few places where you can, in fact, crawl your way to heaven. So... Using that, we are going to, in fact, hopefully try and succeed at crawling off-road with this vehicle. There are a few places in Utah that do crawl. Um, I'd have to find them. I don't remember exactly where they're at, but they are around here. Somewhere. Um... Or I could just take it straight up off-roading, like it's supposed to be. So, <clears throat> we're going to drive around. We're going to take the Corona Crusher. Drive it around Utah. And see what it does. We are observing <clears throat> the Corona Crusher. in its natural habitat. I am kind of disappointed that the uh, meme card did, uh, in fact, not work. I know, it's sad. But, what else are you going to do? <clears throat> This thing is, can fucking move. Oh my god. Oh, hey, hello. We are going. Okay. So I want an. Okay, there's one wheel, there's the other. Wow. Yeah, we were. Uh, oh, well, we lost another. Bye. And we lost the last one. So. Here we are. Back in the Chrono Crusher. Now I did in fact pass one of the off-road trails. But that's not where I'm trying to go. I am in fact trying to actually get... Over towards that plateau way in the distance over there. Or at least close to it. Now, you might be asking, why that plateau? What's so special about it? There's nothing really special about it. It's more like the area around it.
So here you can see we have finally reached where we need to be. Crawling Central. So this is where we take it out of high and put it in the low range box. No, it is very soft suspension, very little damping. So you want to take it very slow around here. There's a lot of bumps and all of that stuff. Now, there is not a lot of rocks to crawl just yet, but we will get there. So here is our first obstacle. There we go, nice and easy. That, that wasn't bad at all. Then again, we have all this ground clearance, massive tires, and we had some good momentum going for us. And this is where things get a little sketchy, because now we have bushes to worry about. So if I remember correctly, bushes can and will pop your tires. Tight squeeze through here. Don't want to go too fast there. Want to be nice and gentle. Nice and easy there. And look at that. We're out. Now, there's quite a bit more to do around in Utah. There are a lot of places where you can crawl. <clears throat> I have not taken all of those places, sadly. But I can definitely tell you... That, uh, I as sure as hell can try. This thing puts out so much torque, it has no problem climbing up stuff. So, ooh, a little too fast, a little too fast. I don't even see what I hit. So now we're back on the main path. But I don't want to go on the beaten path. I want to go this way, where the rocks are, where the slopes. All right, so we're going to go up this nice and easily, gently. There you have it. That nice soft suspension really giving us the travel that we need. And we'll take that. Go. Not even a peep. Not even a scream. Might want to slow it down around here. Take it nice and easy. We're just going on a nice journey, you know? I do want to say I've I've had fun today. Uh I know I don't record as much anymore. I Definitely don't stream as much as I as I used to, uh, but these last couple of years have, have definitely not been the easiest for me. Uh, and as well as trying to, just trying to get content. You know, I don't know what to put up on the channel. So. 
But this isn't about me. So here we are. This is something. This stream is all... Uh, so... This stream... Is all about... Raising money for charity. For... Coronavirus. And even if I can't... Even if I don't raise money. Even if I... Don't raise any money. I don't care. I can at least say I got the message out there somehow, some way. I'm all up for you know wanting to help out in situations like this, you know. Ah, oh, it's so close. Get a good look to see if those wheels are really spinning. Yeah, they're going. All four of them are going. They're really going. You know, I, I think it's actually worth, you know, Raising awareness of, you know, of, of, you know, just exactly how bad things are. YouTubers, Twitch streamers, and the like, all over the world. have been, are streaming today to raise money for, oh, raise money for ch charity, for, you know, just trying to help find a cure and, you know, provide aid to those in need of help. Uh, It's not the easiest thing to do, uh, to try and talk about something as bad as, uh, COVID-19. It's really not, uh, especially when it's affecting so many people so much. It's affecting to the. It's gotten to the point to where it's affecting people who don't actually have the the virus itself, and I feel like that means something. Hey, I actually made it up. I think that should really get my point across now. Ah, uh, what? Anyways, uh, now I felt like I'd give this charity live stream uh, uh, stuff a try. Um, just because. You know, it is the perfect way to get the word out for this kind of stuff. Damn it. 
and it's not every day that I take take my time and really think about this stuff. So. Yeah, fuck your rocks. But. Sometimes you just need to think. Think about. Hey. It would be nice if. We could all get together and just get something done. And this is. This is definitely. one way to do that. Definitely one way to get the message out, you know, and I'm not one for like bandwagons all that much, you know, and I generally only do things that I feel like I would enjoy, but also like I could actually make some sort of difference in, and, you know, get my word out. You know, my opinion on things. And, um... This is one of those things. Hmm. Didn't we know there was a Utah sign there? This is one of those things where I can take the time and talk about it. Um... Don't know if you guys know, but I'm someone who's in the military, and, uh, you know, those of you who think, oh, can't be that bad for you, it, it's still pretty bad. Uh, because travel internationally has been barred and all that stuff. So I have friends that I work with over who are currently deployed overseas and they can't come back because of this. And they have families and kids and it's like I can only imagine what, you know, what they're thinking when all this started like you know we heard about something going on in China what three months ago four months ago you know start of the year we didn't think it'd get this bad like as like the country as a whole like the United States we as a whole as far as I know we're getting news reports of that stuff and January, December, you know. Granted, they weren't like, oh, this is going to be a pandemic. That didn't start until, like, February. You know, late February and into last month. And recently things have gotten so bad to where, like, we are, we've gotten to a point to where our own military can't even bring back the people who are deployed in Iraq, uh, Afghanistan. They can't even bring them home. Like, that's, that's the reality of it. Um, and... 
you know, sure, I could still get into contact with them, but it's not the same as, you know, them being back. They were supposed to come back. They're supposed to come back, I believe, this month or last month. I don't remember which one. I, I believe it's this month. They're supposed to be on their way back sometime this month. And the way things are going right now, that's not going to happen. They're stuck in another country away from their families. And I can barely... I can barely just fathom what they're going through, like, mentally, you know? Uh, my, uh, my sister, she is a nurse. She is a registered nurse. Uh, and she is a phlebotomist. She's the person who draws your blood at the hospital. And, you know, I haven't talked to her since this all started. I've just been so busy with my own stuff. And, but, she has a daughter. And it's like, right now they're trying to get as, as, as far as I know, what I know from medical is that they are working, people who are in the medical field are working so hard right now um, to try and help as many people as possible. Like, my sister's one of them. Um, I have another s sister, she's in the Navy. She deployed like, a couple months before this all started. Um, you know. Uh, and she's stuck on a boat in the middle of the ocean. Because right now, travel in and out of the U.S. is practically barred. Um, you know, I know plenty of people who have jobs and, 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 uh, responsibilities that this is making a lot, har a lot harder for them. Um, so... I can, I, 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 I kind of want to, to put a stream out, you know, at least, you know, get the word out to where I wanted to raise some kind of money. I personally, by myself, thanks to my job as a military member, a technical, technically a government employee who is under contract, um... Thanks to that, uh, I'm guaranteed a paycheck, but for everyone else, they aren't, and I realize that. So, I wanted to donate some money, um, and I have. I've donated $1,000 today specifically um, on another YouTuber's stream, some someone that I really look up to um, as a YouTuber, and... Uh, I donated a total of a thousand dollars, um, because I could, I, uh, I have the money to, and I felt like it would help and, you know, really feeling like that I could do something was pretty important. So I wanted to do this stream just because of that. Uh, I, I was watching other people's streams and I saw that, uh, that, you know, that a lot of people are actually 
doing charity live streams for this. Like, a lot of people. Um, and it's one of those things where you just can't help yourself, you know? You want to be kind of a part of it. You want to... Uh, you, you want to, to help out. You know? And especially being around all these people that you you can't really like personally help out it, it, there's something along the lines of why not why not so as I didn't want to push donating all that much during the stream um, while I was playing the games, you know, creating the vehicles, driving them around, having fun, and because that, it's a, it, it works as a distraction. At the beginning, I said, hey, there's a link. This is specifically for uh, COVID-19, and, you know, and I, and after that, it was the stream. Uh, now that I'm nearing the end of the stream for today. I just want to point out that, like, I, I'm mainly here to, to not only raise money, but to act as a distraction from the real world, uh, from what's going on. I have friends who, you know, are freaking out. Because, you know, they live in one of those areas who are ext getting extremely affected by this, you know? And it's, like, I talk to them every day, you know, and whenever we get something new, something new starts to happen. You know, we, we talk about it, because it's all we can think about you know and it's the last thing we want right now because I've got because half of because not even half, not half but a few of them have asthma you know they get sick all the time you know and of course we get worried about that like who wouldn't uh, so it's just one of those things where you think about it on a daily basis. Oh, what if, what if this person I know gets sick, you know? And I'm sure they're always busy thinking about it because I'm. I think they have family that's like doctors or something. I don't know. But you know, they've got family. There's there's kids in that family as well, you know. You know, my, my niece, you know, she's what, I think four, five? Yeah, five years old. And, you know, if she gets sick with this, you know, I would be, I wouldn't know what to do or say, like, and I can't, I personally can't go see them, so, and, and that's not by choice, you know, like if something were to happen, you know, 
I know plenty of people who, who work uh, jobs at restaurants who who are still working through all this. Uh, there are a lot of people that I know, you know, with with menial jobs that, you know, wholeheartedly believe that their jobs aren't really necessary, but are still considered, like, essential workers, you know? They don't get to take the time off, you know? They're, they're busy, you know? They're still working, you know? And good on them, they still have their job, but at the same time, it's like, this is a really tough time for everyone. And, you know, I have a lot of, I have a few more friends who aren't that lucky, you know, who've gotten, who've lost their job because of this, and, and, uh, you know, aren't making any money and have to still pay rent and all that stuff, you know, and feed themselves and overall just have a good time. Not overall have a good time, but overall try and live their life. Um, it's not easy thinking about that kind of thing as a reality. I think one little disease, you know, in the modern world, you no, know, flipped us completely around on our heads. It's a tough thing to think about. So I wanted to do this stream. You know? I saw... You know... Other people... Streaming... And I was like... This is a worthy... Thing to... to do, because it's something that everyone is dealing with right now. Like, literally everyone is dealing with it. So, it's just one of those things, you look at it, and you want to do something. You want to help out people. So, that's what I did. That's what I wanted to do. I, I started streaming just because I wanted to to help and I do in fact have the the uh, charity link up and all that it's all set up I wasn't expecting much but I still wanted to get out and help so uh, yeah it gives gives me that sense of at least I want at least I was I tried and was a part of something. You know. At least I tried to do something. Even though I can't. I can't directly help. Um. Like. Me personally. Like. I just got out of surgery. Not too long ago. About a few weeks now. And I can't go to work. You know, but I'm lucky I still get a paycheck. You know, like I said, there are people who don't. So, I feel like I'm able to help get things back to normal as soon as possible. Um... I have to, you know, put in my part. Uh, I feel like, like, like I can afford, if I can afford just even like the smallest a bit, I should be able to donate for this cause to, to help. Like I donated a thousand dollars. Like, I donated money out of my own savings to, to, and to help out, because it's 
make sense, so. But I'm not pushing anyone to, like, donate ludicrous amounts of money, like, I'm just saying, like, I did what I could handle, you know. I did what I felt like. I f what I felt like was a good amount that I could handle without absolutely putting me over the edge. Um... And I did. I donated whatever money I could, you know, without absolutely, you know, making myself go broke. Um, cause technically, this is an emergency situation. That's what that money was for. And technically, we are all in an emergency situation. So, me helping out, me being selfless enough to, to th not think about just myself in this situation and think about, oh, I have it pretty good as it is and this doesn't affect me, it is the wrong way to think about this. Um... So, you know, be it like a couple of dollars, man. I could have donated just two bucks, three bucks, you know, if I wanted to. But I didn't. I, uh, I went well above what? What was asked of me. You know. And. I don't regret it. I don't regret it at all. So we're all going through the same thing. And it pays to help out. It really does. So. That's enough of my. Shameless spiel about. Doing good deeds and. How this is a charity live stream. Let's get back to the game. And uh. There's something that I want to do to f close this stream out. And I will do exactly that. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is... See that cliff over there? Way off in the distance. We're gonna drive off it. Of course, this is BeamNG. It's not BeamNG unless you don't destroy something completely. And I think I have just the vehicle for that. So I'm going to grab the H-Series. And we're going to grab the convert, the, the version with the most pieces I have ever seen. Like, for anything. Uh, this is the mod that gave me my old computer so much trouble. Uh, and was so intensive, I double-clicked it like an idiot. 
Um, that gave my old computer so much trouble that when I drove it, I had to uh, drive it in slow motion. Uh, otherwise, my computer would just no. <laughs> it would just nope its way out. So, we're going to go grab the Crash Hard version of the H series. Ah, jeez. Hit mic. And we're going to drive it off this cliff. Now, what's at the bottom of the cliff? I don't remember. So, off we go! And this looks like a flat basin. Looks like we have enough parts. Ooh, yeah. Completely just destroyed. The engine looks like it's going to stay on the top of the basin. And... We've just got parts flying everywhere the suspension is still coming with me at least the rear suspension is the front suspension is uh nowhere to be seen oh and the body panels are starting to come off there it goes look at that those body panels how are they still hanging on? Release, you fiend! Alright, we're gonna speed this up a bit. Oh, I love BeamNG. You don't get crashes like the, that in any other game. And so... You know what? Let's do that crash again. But this time at full speed. <laughs> and there we go, the engine stays behind. The rest of the vehicle goes tumbling down. This time the side panels are completely gone off of it. Hey, there's the engine. Hey, buddy. How you doing? <laughs> so anyways, with that, I think this is a good place to end the stream. So anyways, this has been Shocking Games. I will see you guys later. Deuces.